Hello! Welcome to Give Paws Avi, it's me, Kyle. I'm back for another quick piloting guide for a Rootbot faction, this time the Vagabot. Everybody's favorite robot scoundrel. Um, so, just like the other ones, this is going to be a distilled video of uh, what would be going through my mindset as I'm piloting the faction for a turn. I'm not gonna give an example, I'm just going to walk you through the things I'm thinking about. And if you want more detail about any of the actions we're gonna talk about here or any of the rules or how they interact with other factions, check out the Big Brother video um, all about the Vagabot. It's much longer than this one. So this works, uh, I think, in two ways. Well, I guess three ways. One, one, if you've already watched that Big Brother episode, this can be your capstone pop quiz. If you can follow along with everything I'm saying, that means you fully understand the faction. Congrats. Go play. Um, if you know Root really well, you've played a ton of games, and you haven't watched that Big Brother video, this might be all you need, obviously, and the Clockwork expansion. So if you can follow along with the video and everything makes sense to you, congrats again. You might be ready to play. And lastly, if you have never used the root bots, this is a lot faster of a way for you to get an idea of how they work. Um, and if you are interested in looking for more information, the Big Brother video is there. So without any further ado, let's check out the Vagabot. So at the top, you have Nimble, Lone Warrior, Poor Manual Dexterity, and Hate Surprises. So those, those last two are standard to all of the root bots. Um, the first two are not. Uh, they're pretty simple ones. Make sure you're paying attention to them because that's how the faction works. Moving on to uh, Birdsong, you're going to reveal an order card. And then you're going to craft an order card for one victory point if it has an available item. So remember, if the item's already gone, you get nothing. If it's a craftable effect, you get nothing. Uh, if it is an uncraftable item, you get nothing. In all those cases, you need to pay attention to the suit. When I say you get nothing, I just mean you don't get a victory point for crafting an item. Um, and then third and last part of Birdsong, slip. If you have two or fewer undamaged items, um, move into a random adjacent forest, then go to evening. So items are going to be in your satchel, just like the regular Vagabond. Um, if they're face up, they're ready to go. If they are face down, they are exhausted. Um, if they are moved to the damage box, again, you only have one warrior, so you can't remove those. You take hits by moving items down to the damage box, and there's a lot of rules about that in the Big Brother episode. I'm not gonna go over them now. Um, so if you go into third step of Birdsong and you've got only two or less, two or fewer items that aren't damaged, you're gonna go into a forest and skip daylight. Um, so, daylight. Take the actions ordered in the daylight actions. So, over on the middle of the board, the daylight actions are determined by the suit of the card you drew. So whether you drew fox, rabbit, mouse, or bird, it's going to tell you exactly what actions you're gonna take for that turn. Now, importantly, um, you can either do all three or four of the actions in your turn, you can make it all the way through them and have more items to use, at which point they will just stay there for the next turn. Or you can run out of items before you've met the, you've gotten to the end of your order of operations for the day. All of those are valid. And you'll probably see most of those, if not all of those uh, versions of, of a Fagabot turn in a single game. It just depends on how many items the bot has available to them. So on the daylight, like, column over here, it gives you the rules for these, action, these actions, uh, and then you just bounce over and check them out when you're told to based on the daylight actions table. So before we get into it, at any time you have to move as the Vagabot, you're going to exhaust one item per clearing that you move. You can't move through the woods, you have to move on the regular paths, um, and yes, even if you only have enough items to make it to the clearing that you are you know, aiming for a ruin, say, but then you won't have items to actually explore the ruins, the bot will still do it because the bot hasn't thought that far ahead. So explore, move to the nearest ruins, exhausting one item per move, then exhaust one item to take the item from that ruin. So you use one to take one um, and open up a spot for someone else to build something. Quest, move to the nearest clearing matching the quest. You'll always have one quest face up. Then exhaust any two items to discard the quest and score one victory point, ignoring the card text. 
then replace the quest. Um, the good time for me to mention, you don't need to worry about what item you're using for any of these. They are all essentially just a vanilla neutral item um, in the Vagabot's eyes. Aid, target the player in your clearing, you're not gonna move, has to be in your clearing, with any items and the least victory points among those players. Exhaust as many items as possible up to the number of items they have. Then take that many items from them and score that many victory points. Then they draw that many cards. So you have to be there. You will buy all of their, their items they have, and they will get that many cards for it. But you get victory points for each one. Battle. Move to the nearest clearing with any pieces of the enemy with the most victory points. Then exhaust one item to battle that player. Score one victory point per enemy warrior removed. This is in addition to the normal one victory point for cardboard. Repeat this action, exhausting two items per extra battle as many times as possible. And there are uh, tiebreakers down below. Um, so that repeating part at the end, that does not include the moving part. It only includes if you're in that clearing and there are still things for you to attack and you have two items to also exhaust, you will just continue to churn through those, that wood and cardboard until you either run out of items to exhaust or they run out of targets for you to battle. Repair. If you have any damaged items, exhaust one item to repair one damaged item, always repairing unexhausted ones before exhausted. And last but not least, special. Exhaust one item to take the action on your character card. Skip this action if it would have no effect. Uh, so down here, you choose your character card before you start this part of setup, um, and each one has a different special. So that's daylight. Um, and then down in evening, you have if you have any damaged items, refresh four undamaged items. If you have no damaged items, refresh six instead. Second, if you're in a forest, so if you slipped into a forest previously, repair all your items. If you're not, if you're on a clearing, repair one item. Um, and again, repair unexhausted items before exhausted. And lastly, discard your order card. Um, the only other thing, in your battle track, you have uh, your sixth, ninth, and twelfth item that the Vagabot gains will just live up there on the battle track, and that determines your maximum number of hits. Because again, they don't care about individual items, so they're not tracking individual swords like humans would playing the Vagabond. And that's the end of the Vagabot. Um, it's again a little bit, even in this condensed format, there's a lot of text to get through here. Um, and I shortened up some things, paraphrased a little bit, but mostly just talked fast and didn't go into all the edge cases that you might uh, run into, at least not every single one of them. Um, as I've said before in the Big Brother episode, I think that the Vagabot is one of the best feeling, uh, it, it fits the bill most perfectly when it's actually one of the bots on the table because it's so dissimilar from the other factions already that it kind of makes sense that there's this, you know, there's this war of these big armies and these forces and then there's this one thing, this like little Link character going around doing its own adventuring and nobody is controlling that. Um, now, obviously, that's not the case. People can control that character, but to me, it kind of fits the mechanics and the, the theme pretty well to just have this be, the, if you're gonna have one bot, this is a pretty good one. And if you're worried about reach values, it's almost as reachy as the cats, um, in which case, it opens up almost as many opportunities for you to play with other players around the table because it's providing a lot of that like punch um, to get up to that minimum reach value as the rulebook says. So without any else to uh, go over with the Vagabod, um, I guess I will say thanks for taking a pause with Give Pause, and we will see you here on the channel next time. Bye everybody.